Hi, I'm K.S. Garner, and you're listening to the Solo Nerdbird Podcast. Today, I'll be speaking with the creator, writer, and illustrator of the And We Love You comic currently on Kickstarter, Fell Hound. Welcome, Fell. Thank you for having me. It's uh, great to be on Solo Nerdbird and great to speak with you. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. But um, outside of my introduction, who is Fell Hound and what are you about? Yes. Um, so uh, I am a illustrator and writer from Toronto. Um, I started making comics about three years ago with a short comic zine called Do You Believe in Afterlife? And then after that, I self-published my first uh, book on Kickstarter, I guess, called Commander Rao. And that book did pretty well. It ended up being picked up by a publisher called Scout Comics uh, last November. And now I am back with a brand new Kickstarter called And We Love You, which is a prequel to Commander Rao. It's a 64-page graphic novella. Uh, it's a, kind of like a dystopian war story that tells the tale of a younger commander. And that's currently on Kickstarter right now. I believe we have about, by the time this releases, it'll probably be closer to the end. But at the time of me speaking, we have about eight days left. <laughs> All right. Um, can you elaborate more on the creative process for um, And We Love You and the, I guess the Commander Rao series as a whole? So just a thought in your head to fleshing it out. So you had Commander Rao first and then this prequel And We Love You to now promoting it on Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. So uh, Commander Rao was, um, I think, self-published in 2020. Uh, it actually started off as just kind of a practice comic. Um, it, it's like my second comic. So uh, before Commander Rao, I didn't have a lot of, um, I guess, uh, familiarity or experience making like action comics or having kind of any action scenes in my portfolio. And I really wanted to make a short comic that could, you know, have a bit of fighting in it so that I could use it as a portfolio piece. Um, Those eight pages eventually ballooned into a one shot. And originally I was just going to post the entire comic online for free, hopefully to like, um, I guess, catch the eyes of editors or like just kind of get myself out there. And then one of my friends was like, oh, you should try kickstarting it, you know, at least make some money for your work. And he helped me out a lot. Uh, It was uh, Frankie White. And yeah, eventually I was convinced to put it on Kickstarter and it ended up doing pretty well on Kickstarter. I think it made like uh, $8,000 on a $2,000 goal, (laughs) which was a lot higher than I expected. But yeah. Um, And then after Commander Rao was released, uh, people seemed to like it. <laughs> and I got a lot of people asking me, oh, are we going to get more Commander Rao? Um, Cause it was just a one shot. Like I hadn't really planned for anything more. So I was like, oh, I-, I guess I will make more. Yeah. And then that's kind of how And We Love You happened. Um, the idea behind And We Love You was kind of like a separate comic idea I had in my head at the time. Uh, I wasn't really related to Commander Rao, but I guess after Commander Rao got uh <laughs> like I guess popular in a way I figured I would put the story I had for Andy Love You in the Rauvers so that I could kind of you know have that idea out and also kind of use them um, you know, the Commander Rao's uh I guess fan base in terms mm-hmm. of just marketing the book and yeah and that is how Andy Love You got made uh Andy Love You is it's a prequel to Commander Rao it's actually about uh the tale is about a young soldier who perishes on the battlefield of this dystopian war and starts bleeding out all her memories. Uh, Thematically, it's a little different than Commander Rao. Commander Rao was very much an action story, and this time I wanted to tell a more grounded story. Uh, I wanted to tell more of a a coming-of-age tale and a a bit more of a kind of like a tragic love story in a way. Um, So it's it's not super action-y, but it does dive deeper into the, the world of Rao, into the um, dive deeper into the characters and their relationships and yeah it's also longer um, I think And We Love You 64 pages and Commander Rao was only about 30 so but yeah that's probably the gist of the whole process from Commander Rao to now. <laughs> so did you have to I guess kind of make up And We Love You or was it that this character already existed in the world but it wasn't the focus on Commander Rao but now the idea was there and, you know, their stories were always, they were always connected, but then people wanted more. So you kind of just had to flush it out more. Is Was that in a way, or did you just, just make their connection? You just kind of had to make it up. Uh, I 
little bit of both. Um, so the idea for And We Love You is actually uh, like the idea of bleeding out your memories. That was a comic idea I had back in like 2013. And I, I really wanted to make it. Um, I, I've drawn it back in 2013, back in 2015, but my art wasn't that good at the time. So uh, over the last decade, I've just, just been trying to get better at art so I can make the story. And then I, at one point I did want to make it again, but I made Commander Rao first just because I wanted to try to make more comics to try to practice, you know, getting myself out there, practicing the distribution and self-publishing and all that. Um, and then after Commander Rao, I felt like it was kind of the perfect opportunity for me to be able to um, make And We Love You and the idea of this um, story about a girl who bleeds memories. Um, and originally, as I said, they were kind of two separate ideas, but I decided to combine them because both of the ideas I realized ended up being in dystopian war worlds anyway. So it was kind of easy to just combine the two and put them together. And I felt like by just having both stories in the same world, it kind of helps me on, I guess, like a marketing front. Cause then, yeah, it, yeah. Cause then I can expand on the world that I already have and expand on the, I guess, fan base that I already have. And people kept on wanting more Commander Rao. So it was just like, kind of like a mix of both worlds for me, being able to like have more Commander Rao content, but being able to like make the story that I've been wanting to make for the past decade. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, how difficult was world building for you? How did you manage to create a world that is totally your own and integrate your influences if there were any into it, but maintain at the same time, and we love you and the Commander Rao series as yours, that's in your world and not someone else's? Mm -hmm. um, so to be honest, uh, when I make Commander Rao uh, the one shot, I had very minimal world building. It was mostly made around things that I wanted to draw or things that I didn't want to draw. So I really loved to draw like armors and sci-fi and tanks and stuff. So when making the comic, I was like, oh, what would be, what would make like a, a cool action comic? Uh, well, I'm going to have this, this, badass lady in armor because I like to draw badass ladies in armor and then you know I, I gave her grappling hooks because um I wanted the fight scenes to have some verticality to it so I'm like okay it's gonna be a badass lady with grappling hooks and then when I was coloring Commander Rao um I realized that the entire comic took place in nighttime and it was really hard to kind of see uh where things or like where the character was going so I decided I would give her rocket boots so you can actually see her movements so I guess a little it's like that kind of um, influenced the world and influenced the character design. Um, but the overall bigger story of Commander Rao was kind of built retroactively after Commander Rao's success. And people were like, oh, we want more. And I was like, oh, I should probably flesh out the world more so I know what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, a lot of it was kind of, I don't want to say I was winging it, but I was kind of winging it a bit. Um, taking a lot of inspiration from, uh, I guess, like the Commander Rao universe has a lot of inspiration from the French Revolution, World War II, uh, bits of uh, the Fallout series, uh, bits of Battletech, and just kind of putting all of those into my own dystopian sci-fi world that's also kind of influenced by uh, moments in history. Mm -hmm. So how was your experience searching for your collaborators? Like you're a letterer and your logo designer and the editor, like how, like how was that journey? How was that experience? And how did you know that they were right for this job? Hmm. So for uh, my first book, Commander Rao, uh, uh, Letter Squids was the letterer for that book. And I've always been a big fan of Letter Squids work um he has like a very bold a very loud style he he likes to do a, a lot of really cool like ux design stuff so like i i knew off the bat that he was the one person that i really really want to work with and he made commander Rao absolutely shine like he has such a, a wonderful bold loud lettering style that you don't see super often so i i, I loved collaborating with him like he is such a an incredible designer. Um, unfortunately, due to some uh, scheduling conflicts, uh, Letter Squids couldn't return for And We Love You. So, uh, And We Love You is actually lettered by Lucas Catoni. Um, and pretty much how I found him was that uh, I made a thread on Twitter being like, hey, I'm looking for letterers. Uh, drop your kind of portfolio below. And yeah, I saw Lucas's work and I was kind of really impressed. He has like really cool SF. 
I like sound effects work. And I was just looking through his portfolio and I was like, this stuff is really good. Um, he also did the logo for another anthology that I was an editor in. It was called The Color of Always. It was a queer love anthology. And I love the logo that he'd made for it. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get this guy to letter my comic. Um, and the logo for And We Love You was actually uh, designed by another person called Winston Gambro. Uh, pretty much some of my friends were making comics and they hired him to do some logos. I was super impressed. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna get this guy to uh, make a logo for And We Love You. And then my editor, Frankie. Uh, so he's actually a really good friend of mine. Um, he wrote a series called Broken Bear and he wrote another series called Funny Fists. And I am a massive fan of his work. Uh, I, I think he's a fabulous writer. And we kind of have, I guess, the, the same love of brevity in our comics. Like we don't like super duper wordy comics. And I felt like that he was, like he was someone that I could, uh, I guess, vibe with <laughs> when it comes to writing style. So I wanted him on board as my editor. And then uh, Ricky Lima, he's also another really good friend of mine. He's actually helping me out with the production aspect of, of the book because I'm not like super knowledgeable about printing and Ricky is. So I've, I've partnered with him to make sure that we get a, a really nice printed book and that the bleeds and the margins are gonna look great. <laughs> Okay, so what advice would you offer to other artists that you wish someone would have told you when you first started? So it could be when you first started in comics, it could be when you first started, you know, you, the first Kickstarter that you had, it can pretty much be in, in anything, but you wish somebody would have told you when you first started. Um, I, I think my biggest point is that if you want to get into comics or if you just want to you know do any kind of art stuff I think the biggest thing I could uh, give advice on is to always kind of draw what you love um, I, I think there's always a, a bit of pressure to see you, you know if like people are drawing popular fan art and, and a lot of people say that you would like have to draw fan art in order to you know get some traction online but if you don't love to draw fan art or if there's like something that you don't love to draw and you force yourself to draw it just to i guess hopefully gain an audience i feel like that's the quickest way to burn yourself out um you should always enjoy what you're doing you should always you know make what you love and I, I honestly think passion attracts passion. If you're passionate about what you do, you know, people are going to see it and people are going to, you know, uh, come for the creator, not just the work, but because they want, you know, I, I think the indie comics community is a really good community. They generally want to help each other succeed and, you know, being nice, being friendly and being passionate about the work you do, uh, being passionate about the work others do. I think that's really the best way to kind of build a, like a network for yourself and build an audience and get your work out there. So make what you love um, and slowly you'll find your community, you'll find your people and yeah, and just go from there. <laughs> All right, well, my last question for you, Phil, is what is your idea of success? So I ask that because as creators, if we're not getting regular paychecks from a full-time job or making consistent revenue from our art, we're considered failures or we consider ourselves failures. Many of us will put our dreams and projects on a back burner or give them up altogether because this career path can be highly intimidating and competitive. So what is your idea of quote unquote success? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think I went in into comics knowing that I wasn't going to make a lot of money out of it. Um, I, I think, you know, just asking general people in the indie comics community, it's quite rare to be able to make a lot of money in indie comics. Um, so my uh, metric of success, I would say, is probably just being able to get your work out there and have it in a way mean something to people or like being able to get your intent across. Um, so let's say if I wanted to make like, like a comedy book, then, you know, my goal would be to make people laugh and to have people be able to connect with it. If I make like a, a tragic book, my, you know, my goal would be to have people, you know, feel emotions about it and to actually move people in a, in a heartfelt way. So I think that's probably my metric of success, just be able to uh, connect with people and get that kind of reaction from the audience, like your, your intended reaction from the audience. And yeah, and just being able to 
tell the stories that you love and and, and share it with others. Um, I, I think that's probably how I would measure my success. <laughs> okay, well, is there anything that you wanted to touch on about And We Love You or the Commander Rao series as a whole that I may have missed or maybe talk more about the uh, Kickstarter for potential backers? Uh, yeah, I'll dive into the into the Kickstarter for a bit. So And We Love You, uh, it's a 64 page graphic novella about a young soldier who perishes on the battlefield of a dystopian war and bleeds out all her memories. Um, so we have a, a couple tiers if you're interested in backing. We have digital tiers. Uh, we have uh, digital backup tiers in case you wanted to read Commander Rao first. Um, and I believe there's also uh, add-ons for a physical copy of Commander Rao. They are a little limited. I believe there's only a couple copies left if you wanted to grab one. Um, and we also have a, a merch bundle where you can get a prints by my good friend Kira Okamoto, um, who drew prints of the two main characters in And We Love You. And it also comes with a signed postcard and a sticker by my friend Brett Schmidt. Um, we also just surpassed our two stretch goals. So all physical pledge backers are going to get a bonus sticker of some dog tags, and you're going to get two bonus digital short comics um, by Brent Fisher and Alex Schlitz and Michelle Ebenator and Tench. And those stories are going to expand on the Commander Rao world, expand on the End We Love You world, and probably make you sad because the whole comics are kind of sad. <laughs> and... Yeah, um, I believe we, oh, we have one more bonus goal. Uh, we get to 400 backers and every physical pledge backer is going to get a free mini print of the cover art. Um, as of right now, I believe we are about 30 backers away. By the time this releases, hopefully we will have uh, met the 400 backers, but if not, uh, check out the Kickstarter um, and hopefully you can help us reach the goal. <laughs> we'll probably end up reaching it by then because a lot of these big ones are pretty much gone the physical one uh i guess the whole merch bundle i think this one is gone well yeah there was a collector's edition yeah. that yeah. Um, had all my merch from the last kickstarter and so these those are just the leftovers i had and unfortunately they are all gone <laughs> yeah the big ones the the last four big ones are pretty much all all gone <laughs> yep so yeah that's pretty cool all right well again i want to thank the creator and writer and illustrator of the and we love you comic currently on kickstarter fell hound for joining me today i highly recommend our listeners to give fells and we love you kickstarter and the original commander Rao issue a look share and back if they can all of Fell's socials and website to purchase will be listed in this episode's details alongside the kickstarter link for those who are interested Again, I am K.S. Garner, and you have been listening to the Solo Nerdberg Podcast. Thank you.